All right, guys, we are back in our garage for another video, and today we are going to be talking about the B58 PCB system again. I know we talked about this a couple of years ago, but I wanted to make kind of a more all-around video to cover some topics that you guys ask me about a lot. A lot of people are asking me, you know, when do you need a catch can? When do you need to get a walnut blasting? Or they're just wondering, like, why their catch can is dry and if there are certain systems that work and certain ones that don't. And so in this video, I'm going to just cover everything that I know about the PCV system, as well as some of my opinions on what works and what doesn't, and what you guys should do in case, you know, you're going to be adding power, or you just want to make sure you have the best reliability out of your car. So hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So to start things off, let's talk at a really high level so we're all on the same page. Your car has an engine that is designed very efficiently. Obviously, everything needs to be sealed up very well, you know, on your intake and everything. You don't want any leaks. But in your engine, you just can't quite seal everything up perfectly. You have to leave small gaps between components because there are a lot of metals and they're going to expand and contract when they get hot and cool down. And you also need to make sure that everything can rotate efficiently so you have some oil going between components and things like that. So all of that to say, nothing is perfectly sealed and nothing should be touching off because you really don't want metal to metal contact in a lot of those components. So because of that, you're naturally going to have gaps. Now, in particular, in this video, we're going to be talking about gaps in the combustion chamber because obviously you want your combustion chamber to seal up very well. You know, air is going to come in, fuel is going to come in, the spark's going to ignite it, and you want to basically have a really efficient burn. And when that combustion process happens, it's going to push the piston down and all of that air and gas inside the combustion chamber will expand. But just like everything else, your piston is not perfectly sealed in the combustion chamber. There are rings that kind of act like gaskets to seal everything. But even those rings have small gaps to allow them to expand without potentially touching metal on metal. Now, in those little gaps, when the combustion process happens, you're going to have some of that gas bleeding down the combustion chamber into your crankcase. Now your crankcase basically is everything underneath your piston. So that's where your crank lives. That's where your rods are. That's also where your oil pan is. So you've got all of your oil in there. And it's really important to not have any extra pressure in that area, because if you do, then you can potentially damage things. Like on your piston, for example, it's being pushed down by the combustion process. And when that happens, you don't want pressure pushing it back up. That's kind of working against you and can potentially damage things. Also, you have a lot of seals in your crankcase, like your oil pan gasket or your rear main seal. And all of these gaskets are designed to basically just keep everything inside of your engine, but not necessarily handle a lot of pressure. So it can blow out those seals and cause oil leaks and other things that can cause damage as well. So with that in mind, you basically want to minimize how much pressure is inside the crankcase, or if anything, you really want it to be under a slight vacuum so that everything seals as good as possible. So with that in mind, your engine requires a PCV system, and PCV stands for positive crankcase ventilation. So this is basically taking any positive pressure in your crankcase and helping get it out of your crankcase. So what that typically involves is you have a bunch of holes going through your engine block up to your cylinder head, and that allows the gases to go up out of your cylinder head through your valve cover and then get out of your engine. Now, on a lot of older engines or kind of simple systems, it would just vent to atmosphere. So you might just have a filter or something on top of your valve cover and the gases can just kind of come out that way. But on modern systems, because of emissions requirements, you can't just let those gases evaporate into the atmosphere. So because of that, the valve cover is basically going to manage where those gases go. Now inside of the valve cover, it has a bunch of different check valves. I have a whole video that shows me tearing one open so that we can see what's inside of it. So if you want to see more on that, feel free to check out that video. But all of those check valves manage where the crankcase gases go, because if they're going back into the engine, you basically want it to go to the path of least resistance and the shortest route possible. So the optimal way to get that is right back into your intake manifold so it can go directly back into your engine. But if you have a turbocharged engine, when you're building boost, your intake manifold is also going to see boost, which would also push positive pressure back into your crankcase. 
So there's a check valve in your valve cover that will close under those scenarios and it will route your gases back to your intake before the turbo. So in that area, it'll never see any positive pressure. It will never push pressure back into your crankcase. The only downside is now that those gases are going back into your intake, it has to pass through your turbo, your charge pipe, your intercooler, and just a lot of other components. So it's not really as efficient. Now that seems like a pretty simple solution. You know, now we've got somewhere for the gases to go so we can minimize how much pressure is in your crankcase. But another problem arises because the gas in your crankcase is not just air. It's going to have a lot of different things that are mixed in because, like I said, it's air that's blowing past your pistons during the combustion process. So basically anything that would come out of your exhaust is now also being burnt up and pushed past your piston back into your engine. So you'll see some things like unburnt fuel and fuel vapor. You'll have some exhaust gases. You'll even have some water vapor because a part of the combustion process or a result of the combustion process is some water. So especially on a colder engine, you'll probably have a lot of water going past your piston rings. You'll also have oil vapor and oil mist because in your crankcase, everything's kind of turning and churning and it creates a fine mist of oil. And when all the gases kind of get sucked up through your valve cover, it's not going to just pull out the gases that come from your piston. It's also going to pull out the gases that are already in your crankcase. So that includes some oil as well. So there are a lot of things in there that you don't necessarily want to go back into your engine. Obviously you want fresh fuel. You don't want burnt fuel and exhaust fumes going back in there. You want oxygenated air. You don't want a bunch of water vapor that's kind of diluting your air. And you definitely don't want oil. You know, oil is going to basically ruin the quality of your fuel. It basically lowers your octane and can increase the chances of timing corrections and not. So in an optimal system, you don't really want all of the stuff in the gases going back into your engine. An additional problem that you can see on direct injection engines is as those gases kind of circle around back onto your intake valves, you're going to see the oil kind of accumulate there and gunk up and create this carbon buildup. And that's a really big downside because as that builds up, you can reduce the amount of air that's going into your engine. It can cause misfires and other issues. So that can require, you know, extra cleaning or service in order to prevent that from happening. Now, keep in mind, there's a common misconception here, but on port injected engines where fuel is injected from the intake manifold, you're basically going to have fuel spraying over those valves and it keeps the valves clean. But that does not mean that cars with port injection don't have blow by. All cars have blow by. All cars have that oil mist that can recirculate back into the engine. It's just that the injectors are basically spraying the valves to keep them clean so you don't see the evidence when you pull the intake manifold. But you're still going to have the oil that can cause timing corrections and all of the other problems that can come from recycling PCV gases. So now let's talk about where we land. And basically with the B58, the good news is our engines tend to run extremely clean. You can even see on my car, I have 60,000 miles and there's absolutely no excessive carbon buildup on the valves. All six cylinders are nice and clean, and I've even seen cars with over 100,000 miles that have clean valves. So when I tell people, you know, their cars don't really need a walnut blasting, they always ask, you know, how is that even possible? How can a car with direct injection not have carbon buildup? And in reality, the whole point of your PCV system is to avoid these issues. So like I explained, for example, a big reason why we build up a lot of positive pressure in the crankcase is due to the gaps in our engine. And you need to have those gaps to accommodate increased engine temperatures during high load scenarios, especially when you incorporate a turbo that increases the amount of heat you generate and can cause a lot more issues if you don't account for it in the engine design. But on the B58, as you've all seen, we've got air to water intercoolers. We've got multiple radiators on the front of the engine and an extremely advanced cooling system. And while it might seem overly complex, a part of the purpose of that is to keep the engine at a extremely consistent temperature. So you really don't want extreme hot temperatures or extreme cold temperatures that need to be accounted for in the engine design. Now that it runs more consistently and runs more efficiently, they can make those tolerances tighter, which reduces the amount of crankcase pressure that's generated and also in turn reduces the amount of blow by. Also in the valve cover, there are components that try to separate the oil from the air. So you're going to have several different routes where the gases have to go through. And the goal is to basically make the oil stick to the walls. There are a bunch of galleys and holes in the cylinder head that will allow the oil to drain back down into the oil pan. So if everything is working well, 
you'll basically just have majority of air going back into the engine and all the oil and stuff that you don't want will basically drain back down and either evaporate from the oil or just sit there until you do your next oil change. So that is a big advantage. If you have a properly working system, it basically does the oil separation for you. And I think that's another case in the B58 where it runs very efficiently because even though our valve cover is pretty complex, it does a good job of separating the oil from the air. Now, this isn't just illustrated by clean valves. This is also something that a lot of people notice, but they don't really realize what's going on because they're asking about catch cans. And I've seen a lot of threads where people ask where they can find a catch can that works. Their catch can isn't collecting anything. You know, they check it after so many thousand miles and the catch can is completely dry. And I actually had the same scenario. Like I said, my car is 60,000 miles. I took it to a track day and I put a catch can on before and I drove it, you know, several weeks in advance. I drove it at the track day. So, you know, over a hundred miles of four to 5,000 plus RPM, you know, 20 minute sessions, just wide open throttle pulls and pushing the car really hard. And I got back home, checked the catch can. It was completely dry. And I think that's a scenario that a lot of people run into and they think their catch can isn't working. When in reality, that just means that your engine was designed properly and it's healthy. It's running well. As things wear, those gaps will increase and you will increase the amount of blow by that you get. But especially with a lot of people buying these newer vehicles with lower miles, it's very typical to not see a lot of stuff collecting in your catch can. Or if you do, it's mostly just water, you know, and stuff that, like I said, during your cold start, it creates a lot of that water in your crankcase gases. And that just collects in your catch can because it's not hot enough for the water to evaporate. So you'll see like a really watery mixture. It might be like a little bit orange, but there's not really a lot of oil in there coming from your PCV system. Now, that being said, the PCV system definitely isn't bulletproof, even though we don't have to deal with a lot of the issues you might be familiar with or expecting coming from, you know, older BMW platforms or other direct injection engines. There are a couple things that you need to pay attention to on our cars. One big one, especially for the Gen 1 guys, is I typically recommend doing a PCV delete. If you're able to get away with that, you know, you don't have to worry about emissions checks or anything. It's a really easy thing to do. You basically remove the cap on top of your valve cover, delete that diaphragm, and just install a hose kit that can either run to a catch can or convert it to vent to atmosphere. Now, when you do this, you're deleting that diaphragm that tends to fail when people are idling their cars for a long time. In my opinion, I think the reason why this happens is because that diaphragm is helping manage air that's going to your intake manifold during those low load scenarios. And when you're idling for a long time, it just seems like there is not an adequate vacuum being pulled on the system to get rid of the crankcase gases. And there aren't a lot of crankcase gases being generated, but when people idle for like 45 minutes or an hour, they have this issue where the diaphragm tears. And so it just seems like after an extended period of time, the gases slowly build up to a point where it overwhelms the system and can damage that diaphragm. Now, I don't think you need to replace it every thousand miles or something. I don't necessarily think the diaphragm is a service item. I think a stronger diaphragm might help, but we don't really have any available. So your best option right now is just to delete it completely, especially if you plan on idling your car for any extended periods of time. But, you know, with our Valvetronic system, the throttle body doesn't generate vacuum in the intake manifold like a more conventional engine. And so that's just kind of what I've noticed and what I see is it seems like the vacuum isn't pulling that crankcase out at idle. When you're driving, you know, it pulls more vacuum, so it's a little more efficient. But if you idle for too long and it's not being pulled out, then you tear that diaphragm and get the smoke show and everything that comes with it. Also, it is common for the valve cover to break in high boost scenarios. I see a lot of people say, you know, they upgraded their turbo, they got a tune, and now they're getting oil consumption. And they think that their turbo is burning oil or something like that. Or they have a cash can already installed that's been empty for thousands of miles. And after they put a big turbo on, suddenly it's filling up like every week. And a lot of that is due to a damaged valve cover, which unfortunately can break when you're going through those high boost scenarios. If you damage one of those check valves, then you'll be basically venting gases when you shouldn't be, routing it where it shouldn't go, which can basically just push the oil straight out of your valve cover. Now, there are a couple things that you can do there. One thing, of course, is you can replace your valve cover, but there's not a real guarantee that it'll last forever. You know, it can potentially break again. Another thing that you can do is upgrade your valve cover, which we only really have one on the market right now. Hopefully others will come, but that deletes your PCV system and converts it to a valve cover that you can just have vent to atmosphere. So that's a nice system to have. 
Or you can basically have your catch can just drain back to the oil drain on your turbo. If you put a T fitting in your oil drain and run a hose from the catch can to that oil drain, then any oil that collects in your catch can will just recycle back to your oil pan. I know a lot of people get some heartburn thinking about this. Like, why would I want to take that oil that pushed past the PCV and put it back into my oil pan? But again, that's how the stock system works. That's how your car was working for thousands of miles before you added a cash can or had the blow by issue. There are literal drains in your cylinder head for the oil in your crankcase gases to drain back into your oil pan. And it's really more critical to make sure you stay on top of your oil changes versus being concerned about the oil integrity, because in that case, it's pretty much the same oil that you've been running anyway. So just do your oil changes on time and having a drain from your catch can back to the oil pan isn't really an issue. But yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums everything up. You know, the B58 runs very well. I just have a PCV delete on both of my cars and they've been running flawlessly. No issues with oil consumption or excessive blow by or anything like that. All of the hoses on my VTA kits are completely dry, so they're not pushing any oil anyway. But I just kind of did the PCV delete for peace of mind. And yeah, you know, that's pretty much my recommendation for anybody else that wants to make their B58 as bulletproof as possible. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you.